So you're thinking about importing plants, but you're wondering, you know what? Okay, I'll get them. They'll be in a certain state, good or bad. What will they be like in a few months' time? Stick with me, and in this video, I want to dive into an update from my recent Equigenera purchases. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So for today's video, I thought I'd do kind of an update and kind of show you some of the plants that I got from the imports that are bringing me joy. I might mention a couple of the struggle buses, but without further ado, because there's an awful lot of plants, because I think there was three separate Equigenera purchases, because this year apparently was proof again that I have zero self-restraint. So multiple purchases this year. One, you might be able to see behind me, and that is the Anthurium warraquianum. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you might be able to see. Yes, in frame here, you can see the Anthurium quarimalense. I'm not going to move the Warraquianum because it's in a very, very specific position. However, there is a new leaf coming in at the back. There we go. If I shake that, you can see that on the screen right in the back there. Oh, considering that this was my most recent leaf and it's quite large, I have got high hopes for the one at the back there. But let me show you the Quirima lens. And I think I've mentioned this and I showed this in another video, which was my plant room tour, and I'll link it at the top there. But, okay, so I'll show you some of the original leaves, which had got a bit of damage, and the damage has progressed, and that's fine, and it is in semi-hydro mix. But look at the newest leaf, and that is my head for size. Really, really cool. Yes, it does have some cosmetic damage, because when it was unfurling, it had some issues. The thing I will say about this is uh, it tends to be one that is favoured, by mealybugs. And to be fair, most mealybugs, when I've got new leaves coming in on any of my anthuriums, they will gravitate towards them. This has got a bit of that kind of velvety feel to it as well, which makes it even more desirable to a lot of the pets, I find at least. But this has brought me more joy than I thought. And also the name, Coramalens. Coramalens, a bat. Very, very, very cool plant. Still enjoying it. It has literally just bought out one leaf since I got it. But I think the roots were trying to re-establish themselves. And I think at this stage, I have got some semi-decent roots that you might be able to see through there. Not the clearest thing, but yeah, it is getting a better. And I think there's some roots at the bottom. Yes. So this is one that's only just recently started getting a water reservoir, and we'll see if I'll continue that over the winter. But you can see here, and I think this was one of the plants that I got from the purchase where it was freezing cold when things came over and I wasn't too sure if they were going to do well. But so far, so good. And the newest leaf is nice and sized up. So moving on to some other plants that I bought recently, and that one was the Anthurium erysimoides. And this one's an interesting one, and I'll bring it down so you can see it. I don't think there's any water reservoir in here. This one I've not had for the longest period of time, but it is growing. People that grow in semi-hydro know what just happened there because I just tilted the pot. <laughs> oh, clean up on aisle four. Um, this is growing really, really nicely, basically. And not proving to be particularly difficult. The roots are quite vigorous. They're not particularly thick on this one, I will say that. They are decent sized anthurium roots, but they are still on the thinner side. It is definitely a climber. It has already bloomed. And I have had one, two, two new leaves. And the, the benefit with things like this when they've got multiple leaves on them is that they bush out quite quickly. So if you want a bit more of an impact faster, get something that has got multiple leaflets on each leaf. Because essentially this is one leaf on one petiole, but it's got leaflets. I think that's at least what I would call it. Very, very cool plant. It hasn't proven to be difficult. 
with this, it kind of got a water reservoir relatively quickly because we started having really, really warm days here in the UK. So I'm just like, it needs to go into something because it's drying out super fast. But really good. No problem whatsoever with this one. And it's doing well. This is where I'm trying to figure out what else I got recently that I can show you from those orders. Let me go to another shelf and let's look at some of the anthuriums there. So some other anthuriums that were purchased in a very similar kind of vibe with those kind of multiple leaflets on the actual leaf itself is, and I'm trying to remember now, it's not the eminence, it might be the eminence. But let me show you that one because this is the one that had the umbrella type leaves. And this is the problem with trying to show you things off the shelves because it means that three or four other things need to come off the shelves. So let's do this, shall we? So the massive film, which wasn't one of those orders, but it's doing really, really well. The thing that was classified as a philodendron goldii, this is the thematophyllum sprucianum. Again, multiple leaflets, but this is the most recent leaf. Oh, one leaf, remember? Multiple leaflets. So similar vibe. Mm, I was going to show you the eminence first, but let me show you the pinky eye, which was one of the more recent purchases. This one's doing okay. This is a slightly Tesla E plant. Does it want to be a thrip magnet? Thrip spider mite magnet when it's really really young? Yes. Did it lose some of the cuppiness that the leaves had, which are really what I wanted? Yes. Did it struggle a bit because it's in a really, really bright location? Yes. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to do now that we're coming into the darker months of the year. This might do fine. But I mean, that's the newest leaf. And it did size up quite nicely. Mm, I'm okay with this. But it's... <laughs> It's been not challenging, but it's not been as exciting as I thought it might be. I'm kind of looking at the roots. The roots aren't substantial, but they're okay. Let me put this down and let me show you the actual plant that I want to talk about, which is the eminence. So this is one, and I'm trying to see if there's a reservoir. Oh, there is, but it's dry. Yes, wonderful. So I can lift it up. So already you can see one of the oldest leaves that's gone. But this is the interesting thing with this one. So we will have the umbrella type leaves. But when it starts off more juvenile, it's got one leaf, which is if you want one that is kind of going to change through time. This is one that will do well for you. So let's talk about crispiness here. This again, as I said, I think was because this was getting way too much light. I'm trying to open this up as well. That's the other thing that I've noticed with this. When it was getting too much light, the leaves stay down. So this you can see here, the kind of umbrella in this kind of opens out a bit more. And this is one of the leaves that came with it when I first got it delivered to me. This is one of the newest ones that grew in my care. And it did immediately get more leaflets, basically. This is the next immediate leaf. And now that it's getting a bit darker and it's not quite as bright, this is still hardening off. I'm seeing this open up a bit more. So for the people that were wondering, does this take up an awful lot of space? Does it kind of go into full umbrella mode and you've got then a leaf that's kind of quite wide across? Possibly not because it seems that the leaflets will drop down and it makes sense. This is also one that tends to, from what I've seen now, grow quite upright. There are substantial substantial aerial roots on this and they are thick and in charge so this might be a really decent kind of candidate for propagation the other thing that i've just noticed now is can you see these juvenile leaves which are singular that is a pup that i hadn't realized came with the plant so this might be an anthurium that pups quite easily but this one i had really high hopes for and it is very thick and leathery the leaves so it is relatively robust but, I mean, the roots are doing okay. I'll show you the roots there. So you might be able to see if I move my face out of the way. You might be able to see it's doing okay. This is not a fast-growing anthurium, which surprised me. I thought this might be a slightly more fast-growing anthurium. It isn't. Have I lost hope in this yet? Not quite yet, but I'm kind of getting there. So let's see what this is like in the winter months. See what I mean? I have to put all the plants back now, but that's fine. I love you all, and you know that you want to see these, so bear with me. It just might mean you might get a bit of a rough and ready edit for this video. But... 
the pinky eye, pinky eye, going back on and staying where it is. And then the thematophyllum. And yes, recycling old ice cream pots uh, or ice cream containers because I am never going to say no to free reservoirs or drip trays, even if it looks a bit dodgy. But yeah, it is what it is, basically. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has done that. I'm pretty sure most of us have done that. That's kind of old throwbacks of kind of days gone by and parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, all having like houseplants and they're all sitting in random like used again plastic containers from purchases in the supermarket. Right, let's have a look. Let me see if I can show you some of the other plants that I want to talk about on the shelf and I'll bring you back here because I've got space to talk to you. So the next kind of plants that I want to talk about, you might be able to see if I move a bit more this way and it's not really kind of showing too, too much. Mm. They're all on this shelf basically, but let me go back and bring them here and show them to you one at a time. Okay, so first one, which surprised me because this was one that I kind of added into the basket. It's lost one of its original leaves. So this is the oh, Philodendron Rubricinctum Platinum. I didn't think I was gonna love this plant as much as I do. I get the platinum now. It's a really weird thing with this leaf. So the leaf is shiny. It's giving kind of slight pastazanum vibes. It's giving slight Dean McDowell vibes. It's got some of that ruffling and ruchiness, but that's not what makes it really, really interesting, I find. I think it's the platinum part of its name that gives it, and it does not translate well in photos or in videos, but take my word for this. This has got the most interesting shine to it. Maybe you might be able to see there. It is almost so very slightly metallic looking. So you know when sometimes you get a piece of metal, something like a silver or something like that, and you see it just on the corner of your eye and the light just hits it right, it gets that slight gleam that's almost like those kind of cleaning commercials where you get the ping and it's that little spark that comes off it. This almost does that and it's really, really quite cool and it's really, really a shame that you, it doesn't translate that well into kind of seeing it on camera basically. I'm looking at the caterpillar and this might struggle ever so slightly. It's getting some, and I'll show you what I'm talking about now. And anybody that's had plants for long enough, can you see what's happening on the new leaf before it emerges? So it's unfortunate, it's probably gonna have some markings on there. I don't know what is causing that, but this one was the one that didn't have great roots when it first came to me. And I was really worried that this was just gonna go downhill. If I move my face away, can you see the sheer volume of roots that this has grown in the time that I have had it? Absolutely stonking ridiculous. I think this is probably due to water probably after I film now. So I filmed today on a Sunday and it's my heavy, heavy, like once a month or once every two months, I get really heavy. Like Sundays are heavy watering days for me, as I would imagine for a lot of you actually on the weekend because we've got more time. But once every month or two, it, the kind of the stars align and how often I need to water things. And it's a particularly heavy Sunday in terms of watering. Today it's one of them. So I thought I'd film first and then do the watering. Because usually what happens otherwise is I water everything and then go to film and everything is dripping wet. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Sorry, slight tangent there, but uh, very cool. And actually surprising as well, because I don't think this is one that a lot of people would necessarily go for. This has done well. This one. And for the person who confirmed when I was asking if this is a crawler or a climber and said it's a climber, thank you. And I'm pretty sure, yes, it is a climber as well. I would agree with exactly what you said, basically. So let me put this back and show you a couple of the other ones that are doing well. One that I it shocked me, and I'm quite glad I got it. So the first one is the one that I got because it's very similar to kind of a smell dense vibes. And this is the newest leaf, the Philodendron Patriciae. That was the first leaf that came in my care. This was the one that was freezing cold and had a lot of damage on the leaves when I got it from the pop-up event. But actually it bounced back quite nicely. I'm trying to see if you can see any roots through the moss that is in the actual semi-hydro. 
I don't think you can actually, but it's doing well, obviously. It's, it's, it seems happy. And this is a plant that is meant to be relatively fussy. And it was a risk for me putting it in semi-hydro because I think this is a plant that everybody does. It throws a bit of a hissy fit and it takes a while to stabilize. But loving the newest leaf. I would like it when it gets a bit wider as well. But a few of you that have got slightly more mature forms of this plant. So I'm jealous. Really good. Enjoying this. Less so than I thought I was going to enjoy this. And then I'll show you the other plant now which surprised me and I think I'm enjoying that more than I'm enjoying this. So let me put this back and I'll show you what I mean. And I think the reason why I'm enjoying this one more is because of how, so this is the Philodendron Sharonii and you can see that's the newest leaf and it's got a bit of a blush when it comes in, it's quite nice. I think this can get quite large, roughly leaves, much larger than this. If you give it a proper moss pole, this one definitely, I mean, the, the, it's on a janky support stick and the leaves aren't getting smaller. So there is that to be said. If I wanted them to truly get much, much larger, I think I'll, this is one that would need that moss pole. But it's still kind of like grasping at air with its aerial roots. Consistent, just a consistent grower. It did not skip a beat. It has grown beautifully ever since. I'm trying to see if there's any roots that are coming out. No relatively fine roots from what I can see. It's not maybe clear enough. I'll put it on the camera because you can see what I mean. It's very kind of dark because of all the kind of algae and moss that's kind of growing in there. But it just keeps going. Great, great plant. Super glad I got it. And it seems to do really well, really, really well. As I said, I was fully expecting the Patriciae to be the one that I really, really enjoyed because it was giving me what I wanted it as ruffles and the long leaves. And this has got similar vibes. It's got the kind of bunny ears at the top that I didn't think I was going to like. But the fact that it's got that slight blush when it grows in, all of these things, and the fact that it just hasn't skipped a beat. This is usually on my highest plant shelf. I've had to move it away. You might be able to see how that is growing, kind of like, that's the curve of the conservatory roof. <laughs> I need to move this somewhere down so it lower down so it's got higher to go basically but this has been getting beat down with light it has not skipped a beat basically and it has not gone crispy either so this is probably one of the plants that gets the highest volume of light in my space doing really really well really 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 well so highly rate this one philodendron sharonii surprised me entirely I will pick up the Spirit of Sanctity because I know some people are going to want to see how it's doing. It's doing okay. Nothing to write home about, but let me show you. Spirit is a Sancti. Newest leaf, quite small. Um, it's still got that kind of thickness that I was talking about before. There's some a tiny bit. I'm trying to see if there's any thrips on this. No. No, that was a figment of my imagination. But smallest leaves, this is the next one. I've still got it in a relatively small pot because I don't want it to go absolutely batshit. And I find that a lot of the times my philodendrons, when they're slightly root bound, do slightly better. This might soon need a slightly bigger pot, to be fair to it. But it's okay. It's okay. It's nothing to write home about just yet. But at the same time, it it is a relatively small and juvenile plant. And the fact that we can get a hold of these for years, and they're stupid expensive. I kind of get this. If this is the true reality of this plant, and it's a bit of a slower growing philodendron, I think this does speed up a bit when it gets older. But I kind of get, barring the other reasons why this had such a high price point in terms of where it was and locations and things like that, I get it. Am I glad I got this? Yes. Am I still enjoying this? Yes. Is this setting my world on fire at the moment? No, but I mean, it is what it is, basically. I have got a lot of excitement to see this mature because I do really like the look of the mature spirit of Sanctus. I didn't just get it because it was the one plant that everybody couldn't get and it was so expensive. I actually like the vibe of the mature plant. So looking forward to that when it happens. So some of the other plants that have actually been really good to own and care that came through with some of my most recent Equigenera orders. And you see this leaf. This is the most recent leaf. This is the previous leaf here. 
and Therium is Meryl Dense, right next to the Philodendron is Meryl Dense. Vibes. Just vibes. Very cool plant. Very cool plant. I don't know what happened here with the leaf. It's got some texture that came through. Maybe it got stuck a bit when it was unfurling. There's no bugs on this at all. This has been a joy to grow, actually. And I do, I am aware that this is not for everybody. Philodendron as Meryl Dense might have a few more fans. This is a very specific shape. It is what it is. It's definitely thicker. Obviously, it's an anthurium leaf than the philodendron, but not by much. It's got that rooshiness. It's slightly more squat. Then you get the kind of slightly more pointy as Meryl Dense philodendron. But have I regretted getting this? Absolutely not. It's growing still in semi hydro beautifully. It's growing with a water reservoir, doing really, really well. But yeah, it's been a joy to grow. No real pest issues at all. It's getting kind of medium light, loving life. It's even bloomed a couple of times. I don't know whether or not, I don't think that's going to show up on the camera. Maybe you can kind of see where I'm talking about there. The, the bloom is about to kind of die off. It's yellowing off at the moment. I did not pollinate it. This, this year, I have pollinated zero anthuriums on purpose. Whether or not anything got pollinated by accident, I don't know. Time will tell. And before anybody asks by accident, it might just be because there might have been a fly buzzing around in here at some point. And like push come to shum, somehow the fly pollinated. Unlikely, but what I'm saying is if there's an accident, it's not because I did it. It's because of other factors, basically. Because I kind of wanted a lot of my anthuriums this year to just kind of beef up their foliage game and not necessarily their bloom or propagation and seed game so to speak but this one i definitely do not regret getting i'm trying to think if there's anything else oh yeah because i know people are going to ask philodendron esmeralda spirit oldest leaf is going a bit red some of this is sun stress. This has definitely got some sun stress on it as well, but both of these leaves are old and they might be going soon. There's a slight darkness that is happening here. That's the, the next oldest leaf. This is the, the newest leaf that came with it. This leaf was the one that was in a sheath and it kind of aborted half of the leaf, but can you see the petiole that I have got right there? That is going to be a decent sized leaf, I think. This one, I've put it into moss pole, it's doing quite well. The rutar is a spectacular, it's coming down at the bottom as well, and you can see around. This has so far been growing pretty much the same way that my philodendron is male dense is, basically. I want to see where the spiritus part of it is going to come in, and I think it might just be the petioles are a bit stronger, whether or not we're going to get some of that shape on the leaf that's going to come through. I don't know, but I think I need to let it get a bit bigger to do that. But very, very excited about this one. I will say, and I'm trying to remember now, in relation to my philodendron as Meryl Dense, when it was kind of closer to this size, I had it, when I first got my Meryl Dense, the leaves were a touch bigger than this, basically. So it might be the same size as the new leaf that's going to come in now. I'm trying to remember now back then if it was a relatively slow grower at that stage. At the moment, it's consistent about one leaf a month, which considering the size of the leaves, I'm okay with that. I don't know if this is slightly slower and it's slightly slower because it's like the Spiritus Sancti, but again, because I've only got a juvenile Spiritus Sancti and pretty much a juvenile version of this is kind of becoming a teenager, I think, at this point. The speed isn't that fast if that makes sense so i don't know it's not aligning with my mature philodendron as meryl dense but again it might just be a maturity issue rather than it's slow because 100 percent the spirit of sancti is slow it might not be because i've only got the juvenile form do you see what i mean it's kind of tricky to kind of put into proper terminology but let me put this down and let's have a look at the next plant. I'm trying to think now if there's any other ones that I wanted to show you which are easy to bring out. Yes, I do have another one of those umbrella e plants and I'll try to dive in and bring it out. Has it got a water reservoir? It does, but it's dry. We should be good. Okay, umbrella e type plants. And this is the Anthurium clavigerum. 
So that's the newest leaf that is just coming in at the moment. There was one solitary mealy bug a couple of days ago that I took off and it didn't seem to do too, too much damage. I don't think there's any more. But I'll say a few things about this. This is not getting the, the best light. It's getting medium towards low light. This is the one that can get multiple leaves, but the reason why I like this, and I don't know whether or not this is going to come up well on video, is that the leaves almost have a slight ruffling that's happening on them. These are thinner leaves than the eminence that we were looking at a moment ago. But I think with these ones, they look a bit more kind of oak leafy. I don't know how else to describe it. It's that kind of undulation that it's had. But this one can get multiple leaflets again on one petiole. It hasn't. This is still three leaves. This is still three leaves. These are three leaves. It's doing okay. And I'm trying to think. The roots, roots are quite good at the bottom. <laughs> roots are okay. You can see some of them coming out at the bottom there. They're not particularly thick. So there is something about to be said about that. This is wobbling a lot and it is getting quite kind of lanky at the top. I don't know whether or not this is one again that will kind of require... A moss pole, it might do well with a janky support stick, and I might not put it back into the shelf now. I'll put it down whilst I'm watering in a minute to actually add a janky support stick and see if that makes it a bit easier for it because it is wobbling a lot. It's not, I mean, it's still bringing me joy. It's still an okay plant, but I still think between this one and the eminence, I prefer the eminence, interestingly, even though this one's got more interesting leaf structure than the other one does. That one's already given me the multiple leaflets on one of the petioles. So hopefully that makes sense. And I'll finish off with two, one Anthurium and one Philodendron. Let's start with the Anthurium. And of course the Anthurium got watered the other day, so <laughs> that's gonna drip everywhere. Anthurium rogulosum luruquii, I don't know. Um, so that's not the newest leaf, that is. So it's gone a bit smaller, but the newest leaf before that was this, and I managed to rip it as it was coming through, which is so infuriating, but it's doing okay. There is, this is the oldest leaf, so it's going a bit yellow. This one's got a bit of yellowing going in as well. As does that on the corner. These are very, very thick leaves. And to be fair, so far I found this Anthurium to be massively forgiving. I'm trying to think about roots and see if I can show you. You might be able to see if I hide my face there. It might focus. There we go. It's okay for roots. The roots are relatively small, but this was a relatively established plant when it came to me, and it had a lot of roots on it. I'm trying to think here. Ooh, maybe. No. This is a really bizarre thing. When you've got the predatory mites which can go for the thrip larvae as well. They look very different to the actual um, spider mites. So, but I'm just like, oh, is that, have I got thrips or spider mites? I don't think this has got spider mites, but I think it is those mites, the predatory mites. I will leave this down and I've got my kind of magnifying glass to check and see if that is actually spider mites. If it is, it'll get treated. If it isn't and it's a predatory mites, it will stay on there because it's doing its thing. It's fine. I don't think it is spider mites because I'm not getting damage showing up on the leaves, if that makes sense. So this is the rogulosum. And now I will finish off with potentially what so far is proving to be one of my favorites. My favorite favorite is a heterocraspidum. I still love my heterocraspidum. People that have been here for a while are probably sick and tired of me hearing it. I still love that plant. Still love it. This is a close second though. So let me, I've put it down. I'm going to pick it up. Philodendron Helenia subspecies. Helenia sorry. Size, yeah. Janky support stick. Absolutely fine. Does not need a moss pole. So far it's showing me. If I gave it a moss pole, would it potentially maybe get a bit bigger? Possibly. Am I okay with it to stay at this size? Completely fine with it. Based on some of the images that I'm finding, I don't think this sizes up hugely. So that is something to be aware of if you're considering something like this plant. But yes, it is <laughs> wide.
it, it does take space. It does grow up as well, so it's not just like the Gloriosum, which is wide and spreading, basically, or some something like the, I don't know whether or not you might be able to see, the UPI is just wide. This is wide and upright. So, but the reason why I think I'm enjoying this so much is I like the leaves. It has never, touch wood, had any problems. So I am really, really enjoying this plant, more so than I thought I was going to. It might also be the fact that this is a plant that went into my shopping basket with Equigenera two previous times and never got purchased. No, first time went in, did not get purchased, got other things. Second time I went to buy it and it was out of stock. Third time they did have it. So I'm just like, absolutely, yes, I put in the basket. I definitely want that plant. Quite glad I got it. Quite, quite glad I got it. So very, very, very cool. And not really giving me any real issues. There's been other plants, obviously. I'm not going to bore you all to death and show you every single one of the plants that I've got from Equigenera, but these are the ones that I really wanted to give you a bit of an update and a bit of a story behind them. Ooh, no. I know which plant I'm going to finish on. Most people might already guess where I'm going to go with this, mainly because it's still alive, the Anthurium cuticuensis. This is not a plant for everybody. I get it. This is, but it's still, I love it because it reminds me of the chicken legs, especially now with the girls. The girls are doing really well, by the way. We're getting between two, almost three eggs a day now. So, and they are kind of bantam chickens, two silkies and Polish, like Polish, po Polish, Polish. They shouldn't be laying that much at the moment, but we're coming into the winter months. I think that's going to taper off for the people that are interested for the chickens. but. This is doing really, I'm not going to say really well. I caught myself there. It's surviving, yeah? For now. <laughs> Still not getting cocky. I don't think I ever will get cocky with this plant because, as I said, this is one that even Enid in her book <laughs> mentioned that <laughs> it's tricky. So I would never claim that I can necessarily grow things better than anybody like Enid, for instance, who's been doing this for a lot longer than most of us. <laughs> but so far, so good with this. Am I still glad I got this? I cannot see any roots coming out of this yet, but it is permanently in semi-hydro with a water reservoir, like a lot of you have said. So it seems to be doing all right. The cholera seems to be helping as well a bit. I think this is one of those things that might need a moss pole sometime soon because the leaves are starting to get smaller now. So this is almost fully hardened off, but it's a smaller leaf than the previous leaf. It has got the more mature form, but it is smaller considering these were the original leaves. I am letting the nighttime temperatures in here drop down to about 15 to 16 degrees Celsius at night. Not only for this plant, but I've got my Dr Dr Dracula Solii orchid, which is the monkey face orchid. It's one of the monkey face orchids. It's not the only one. There's a few that have got monkey face like blooms on them. They all need a temperature drop at night. 15 to 16 degrees Celsius is something that most of the plants in here can tolerate because I've let them get to that level even over the winter months. So let's see how things pan out. But let me put this back down. And yeah, that was the kind of update that I wanted to do on some of the plants that I got from the unboxings. To be fair, most of them have done well. I don't think I have lost any so far. Um, doesn't mean that's not going to happen. <laughs> the Kudikuensis can always show its <laughs> rear its ugly head somewhere. But so far, it's been okay. Do I think that's the case for everybody? I'm going to be blunt. I don't think so. So we shall see. But so far, so good with a lot of these plants. I cannot complain. Some are more favorites than others. Some surprised me more than others. But doing okay, doing okay so far. Did any of these surprise you? Did you have any favorites when I did the unboxing? Has that changed for you now having seen the update? Any of these that you're considering buying or have bought, I'd be really curious. Or if you've got like some of your own experiences, let me know, basically. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.